So the volunteers, as a reminder, is Louise, Richard F, Janet and Richard B. Uh, across all of them, uh, they use them for work, they use them for running, they use them for weights, they use them for golf. So there's a lot of activities that we utilized uh, for these socks, really putting them through their paces and getting really genuinely brilliant feedback. So I told all four testers uh, to go about their usual exercise and sporting habits wearing these socks. I know that these are designed and built for running in particular, so Louise, for instance, is going to get maybe the most benefit, but I also think compression socks like this should be and are more versatile than just for running. Um, so I wanted to see how they performed uh, under the stress of different variables and sports. So let's see what they had to say about the socks. <laughs> Aesthetic. So Aesthetic was really, really well reviewed. As said at the start, it's one of the highlights of this sock. So I asked all, all four reviewers three different questions when it came to Aesthetic. I asked them their view on the color, the style, and also their perception of how important Aesthetic is when making the purchasing decision of a product like this. And then I used all three scores to come up with the overall Aesthetic score. So I gave the four testers four different colors. So Louise received the pink and black, uh, Richard F received the ocean petrol, Janet received the rose dark red, and Richard B received the plain white ones, of which Louise and Janet loved their colors straight out of the box. They had no qualms with them. I think they gave them a full 10 out of 10. Uh, Richard B said, whilst commenting how professional they look, I think he just gave them an eight, whilst Richard F did, did not like the color, he only gave a four. Um, however, when I showed Richard B and Richard F the other colors that were available to them, and in hindsight, if they had the choice of which color they could pick, um, they both picked black or the plain black pair. And when asked what would they score these socks, uh, Richard F actually bumped his score up to an eight and Richard B actually bumped his score up to a 10. When it comes to style, as said, they also all were very, very favorable of it. I think uh, Richard F and Janet in particular were um, very favorable to um, mentioning specifically about them liking the two-tone design. Um, just Richard F just did not like the colors of his particular two-tone design, uh, which is totally on me, because uh, they were the socks I just happened to have when I was issuing the socks out for testing. But then it comes to importance of aesthetic. So I asked my testers, out of 10, how important is color and style a part of that sort of purchasing impulse slash decision? And the responses were actually quite mixed. Louise rated it essential, a 10 out of 10, could not be ignored. It was a feature that has to be considered when buying. Whilst Janet, on the other hand, was um, more concerned about how they fit and the comfort of the socks, only really giving the importance a three out of 10. The Richards came in, in between with Richard B giving a five and Richard F giving a score of seven out of 10. And as said, these scores were then used to help calculate that ultimate and brilliant aesthetic score for CEP's The Run Socks tool. I think it's also important to know that actually Louise, who's done uh, a few socks for me during this review process, she actually found these to be aesthetically superior to compressed sports uh, full run socks. <laughs> Next up is comfort. So comfort of the sock was also very well received. It got an 8.8 .8 out of 10 average across all four uh, reviewers. So very, very favorable. From my perspective of these socks, I must admit I found the socks to be a little bit on the tight side. I know they're compression, but even then I found them a little bit, little bit tight. And actually Richard B, Janet and Louise all made the same sort of comment. Um, but this isn't necessarily a negative. Janet actually commented how much she loved the feel of them when she got them on. Um, and actually commented that she, <laughs> the moment she had them on, she felt like she was ready to go for a run, which given she was having knee issues at the time of testing, um, that's actually saying something. Richard B also said that despite the fact that they were quite tight, he found them to be very comfortable once they were actually on. But all positives aside, uh, Janet and Richard F did have a couple of pinching slash bunching issues with their socks. So Janet had a couple of bit of uncomfortable pinching just below her knee, whilst Richard F found the socks to come up a little bit too high, particularly at the back of his knee, uh, and it bunched up and caused irritation, uh, particularly when his knee was bending in whatever activity, whether that be running or weight training. This was actually so much of a problem for Richard F that ultimately he said he didn't like these socks because of this irritation alone. <laughs> 
There's much to be said for first impressions and all four testers straight out of the box had no qualms with these socks uh, whatsoever. Uh, they looked good, they felt good and hence we have a great wow factor. In hindsight, looking at what the uh, my testers ultimately scored them, uh, these well, this wow factor and first impressions was maybe a little bit on the optimistic side, but ultimately uh, none of the testers slash reviewers uh, were disgruntled at the point of getting the socks out of the box. Fit. So something very close to comfort, but distinctly different. Again, another 8.8 .8 out of 10. Janet actually noted how stretchy yet sturdy these socks were, which is where the, the polyamide and elastane combo is really doing its work. Richard B also commented about how sturdy and supportive they were around his calves, uh, particularly when he was playing golf. Louise at this point just simply reiterated how much she loved them and the fit was definitely a part of her admiration for these socks. But my 3C reviewers did have a few notes and comments about how the fit could be improved. Most significantly, Janet actually found that her foot was swimming around a little bit in the sock portion of the sock. If you see what I mean. <laughs> so yeah, the space around her foot was a little bit roomy and led her to comment that actually she thinks the size guide should reflect the foot size more, which is incredibly appropriate and something I actually go on to talk about in the size guide section and my critique of it in the desk research section uh, later on in this video, but ultimately didn't ruin her experience with them. Richard F, as mentioned, no, um, noted that the socks came up a little bit high for him um, and ended up causing that bunching and discomfort behind his knee. Louise and Richard B, they both noted how difficult the socks were to put on, something again I totally, totally uh, related to. Uh, Louise in particular, where she's currently living in Valencia noted that they were particularly difficult to get on and off, particularly the off part, if the weather was hot or if it was a humid day. This is something I also can personally relate to, not the fact that I've run in necessarily hot weather, but when I tried to use them for a post-swim recovery effect, uh, where my calves were so, so slightly damp and warm and maybe slightly humid, it was really, really difficult to put them on to a point that I was actually worried that they might rip. So yes, be aware of that. These are quite tough to get on, but as Richard B commented, they are very comfortable once they are on. Whilst I was running with them, I did find them, as said, a little bit too tight and this did seep through particularly when I was at the top of a hill climb or at the end of an up tempo section with my calves feeling somewhat suffocated like it just felt a little bit strangled this effect didn't last long and at the moment I got to the crest of the hill or um, did a bit of a recovery bit in my up tempo session it was absolutely fine and my legs actually recovered really quickly uh, which in turn might be a part of the the compression effect I think it's also important to note at this point that Louise commented that she preferred the fit of knee length compression socks or these particular ones compared to her calf sleeves which are also CEP. So whilst I'm not reviewing calf sleeves in this series I thought it would be important to note for any of you guys who are torn between knee length compression socks or going for calf sleeves that Louise yeah ultimately did prefer the knee length compression socks so just just to throw that out there. <laughs> Then we have quality. So quality, I asked my four 3C reviewers this twice. I asked it the first time before they actually ended up putting them into their training. So they had them on, but they hadn't actually tried them, if you see what I mean. And I asked them out of 10, how would they rate the quality of this product? Does it, do they perceive this product to be high quality or low quality? And then after the 10 sessions, I asked them again, if they still perceive these socks to be of high or low quality and see if there was any change. All four reviewers has ultimately said yes these are of high quality with as you can probably already tell there were the, the, my four testers gave this a score of 8.8 .8 out of 10 again i think this is the fourth thing in a row they scored it 8.8 8 out of 10 but they, they did definitely give different scores it's i, I, I promise this isn't rigged <laughs> they, they just found the socks to be consistently very good at this point of the review but two of my 3c reviewers did actually change their minds with richard f initially giving the socks a score of 9 out of 10 for quality but after he had finished with them dropped them down to an 8 this might be because of the irritation he found behind the knee whilst louise was the opposite she initially Initially gave them a score of nine and her experience was obviously very favorable and very positive and ended up giving them a score of 10 out of 10. Now we come to value. Yes, that 8.8 .8 out of 10 streak 
comes to an end. So like the quality question, I asked my testers twice before trying and after trying, how much would they expect these socks to be sold for um, in shops and online? All four of my 3C reviewers came in quite notably under the actual RRP of 44 pounds and 95p and hence the lower score compared to the other features we've already gone through. Richard F and Louise both came in at 30 pounds whilst Richard B and Janet came in at 15 pound 50 and 15 pound respectively, which is only around a third of the actual RRP. Interestingly, Richard B was the only one to change his mind, initially guessing 15 pounds and then upping it to 15 pound 50 after he had tried them. Now, knowing Richard B, I, <laughs> I'm not sure if this was some comical flair uh, by just chucking on an extra 50p being somewhat sarcastic, but he did have a genuinely positive experience with these socks. Maybe I am totally underestimating Richard B and maybe he did actually think they were worth a little bit more after having tried them. And at least there is that he did add 50p more rather than taking 50p off. Um, again, maybe reflecting that positive experience that he had with these socks. Across my four testers, the average guess was, I think, 20, yeah, 22 pound and 63p, which is almost half the actual RRP. Now, this implies two things. I mean, it maybe implies that my four testers just don't buy knee length compression socks very often, and therefore they're a little bit out of the know-how and how much these cost. But also it's important to consider the fact that just maybe these socks are a little bit on the overpriced side. <laughs> marketed features. So CP made three main claims on their website about what these socks do and how they can benefit your training. I therefore asked my 3C reviewers what they thought about these statements by asking them how believable they, these statements are out of 10 given their experience with them. So the scores that you've just seen are the average across the three claims that I'm about to go through. So for statement number one, which was the run compression socks feature a proven blend of materials and wrinkle free fit for blister free running. Of the three claims, this is the one that my testers or the 3C reviewers are called bull on the most. They only gave this one a 5.8 out of 10 uh, for believability. Uh, Louise, I think, was the most positive, giving, I think, this was a 7. Uh, and she still got blisters with them, so I think she was quite overly positive or in that regard. <laughs> this kind of implies that whilst obviously the socks were received well, my 3C reviewers, they just didn't, they just didn't think that these socks reduced friction or irritation to the skin any more significantly than maybe some normal socks. I also go into this as said later on in marketing and what the science says. Statement number two. So statement number two, targeted medi compression wraps around your calves and activates the supply of nutrients for noticeably lighter legs and a feel good effect. So this was actually the most believable of the three claims that CEP give on their website for the Run Socks tool uh, slash 4.0. So this, this does imply that m my volunteers did feel a difference during their training and after, maybe feeling that their legs were a little bit fresher after having used them. I personally also saw this benefit mostly when I was on the spin bike. Uh, my legs just felt like they could go a little bit longer and also having recovered after a rather tough fartlek session uh, out on the roads, my legs felt rather good. So I would also back my volunteers in this regard. And statement number three. So statement number three, the anatomical design and padded zones in the foot reduce exhausting muscle vibrations for optimum cushioning and greater endurance. This claim actually split my testers the most. This might be just due to my testers doing different activities and therefore having different experiences. But also I found with this statement, it was quite vague and it might be their different responses were because they interpreted this statement differently because this statement definitely has a lot of marketing buzzwords to a point where I don't think it necessarily makes a lot of sense. So there is that and that's something I definitely go into uh, later on in marketing and what the science says. But ultimately from the feedback my testers gave me, they imply that these socks somewhat to strongly reduce those fatiguing muscular vibrations in training. Mm -hmm. 
brand recognition. So I asked my four testers uh, how aware they were of CEP and their products. And also, even if they hadn't heard of them, what they think the reputation of CEP is based on their either good or limited experience with CEP's products. Janet and Richard B hadn't heard of CEP before in the slightest, but both gave quite favorable reputation scores with Janet saying that the, the feel and the look of them uh, made her feel that this is a good brand um, and therefore gave quite a good reputation score. Whilst Richard B again gave his positive experience a albeit maybe slightly more reserved score, but a still a good score nonetheless. Richard F and Louise both have seen CEP before, with Richard F saying that he's seen them on other reputable online retailers and also having seen them in running magazines. This then made him a little bit more familiar with the brand and therefore maybe thinking, oh, well, it can't be that bad if some of these stores stock them. He also noted that he was unaware of any bad press that CEP has. Louise, on the other hand, out of the four, was the only one who's actually tried and tested CEP products before and hence gave um, good scores for both brand recognition and reputation based on those good experiences she's had. Post-exercise benefits. So given the post-exercise recovery is one of the more widely used uh, sort of features of compression socks that brands like to use for marketing, it's paramount that people slash athletes use and keep these socks on after their exercise or their session uh, to make sure they maximize uh, the benefit, recovery benefit in particular, these socks can offer. So I asked my testers, firstly, did they manage to keep these socks on afterwards? It was something I did say to them in their introduction sheet that they should look to try and do. So I asked them, had they kept them on after their exercise? And then secondly, if they did, did they feel any benefit for having done so. Louise and Janet did not keep the socks on after their sessions. This means that both of them missed out on a significant part of what these socks do. This isn't necessarily their fault though, and maybe starts to highlight a limitation and an impracticality of compression socks and the benefits they offer. For example, Louise said that she didn't keep them on after training because she needs to shower. She, she needs to get on with her day. Whilst Janet commented that the pinching just below her knee made her not want to keep the socks on for any longer than she needed to. To benefit fully from knee length compression socks, the socks do demand time. To benefit fully from them, you need to not only train in them, but to continue wearing them for up to 30 minutes, if not more, after your session. So if the socks aren't 100% comfortable or you don't really have the time in which to lounge around in them after your session or after exercise, it may be worth considering what it is you actually want from these socks and whether or not they are worth the investment to you. Richard B and Richard F, however, did comment that they did leave the socks on after their sessions and training, um, with both of them saying they did feel a positive effect on their calves, uh, with their calves feeling somewhat fresher after having left them on post activity. Richard F however did comment that uh, he was very aware that this effect that he felt might be just down to placebo. I uh, also second Richard F's um, skepticism at this point. Um, however, where upon a reflection of my experience of trying these socks, I didn't really have any calf niggles, nothing that was notable or that I remember. And so maybe there is something to the post session benefit. The impracticality of keeping compression socks on after exercise isn't limited to these particular socks. It is a limitation that you'll tend to find across all compression socks. But for this particular case, two of my reviewers didn't keep these socks on, deriving that they either probably weren't maybe comfortable enough or they couldn't justify doing so. <laughs> Thickness. So when it came to thickness of the Run Socks Tool by CEP, three of my four testers said the thickness was perfect and they wouldn't have changed it. Richard B, however, was the odd one out, saying that he actually found them to be too thin. So much so that he had to actually put on a second sock over the top so that his foot wasn't moving around in his golf shoes so much. Now, to be fair to CEP, these aren't golf socks. However, if you particularly like thick and very well padded socks, socks, these may not be the ones for you. The last and maybe most significant question, did my reviewers like these socks? 
So despite all four of my volunteers sharing rather positive feedback throughout the review so far, only three would go on to explicitly say that they like them. And that was Louise, Janet and Richard B. Richard F, as I hinted earlier, said that he didn't like them, mainly because of the irritation behind his knee that he got as a result of the socks coming up a little bit too high, but also the color. I then clarified with him that had he tried the black pair that he preferred aesthetically, if that would have changed his ultimate decision to have liked them or not, he actually came back and said, no, the irritation behind the knee was significant enough that no matter the color, he would not have liked them. A few other comments that my reviewers made based on other questions that I then asked them. So I asked all my four volunteers whether or not they had tried knee length compression socks before and how CEP's The Ron Socks Tool slash 4.0 compared to them. Janet was the only one to come back to say that she had tried uh, compression socks before and she had said she had tried Disco Ball Socks. So that's not a brand I'm familiar with. If it is a brand you know, please please put a link or something below so I can explore them. I couldn't find them with a short search on Google but she went on to say that actually she preferred the CEP ones she tried in this review over the disco ball ones because she preferred how high they came up the calf even despite the pinching around the knee. Richard F and Louise commented that these washed perfectly fine. Janet did say that she found the socks shrunk very slightly uh, and that the color did fade as well a little bit but ultimately she said they were still very comfortable and she still loved the color of them and the color still remained pretty vibrant. The only other comment was made was by Louise who just said that she would totally recommend them to anyone looking for knee length compression socks. I personally liked them too um, but a couple of comments I will make is that I wouldn't recommend them for yoga and um, when I did yoga with them I found that they reduced the sensitivity in my foot uh, and also reduced the grip uh, which made my foot work over time to maintain posture and position on my mat. I also found it reduced sensitivity in my calves when foam rolling. So in hindsight, this actually could be advantageous to those of you who maybe find foam rolling too sensitive on your calves. I totally recommend giving a calf sleeve or a knee length compression sock, something like that, over the top of your calves, just to maybe take the edge off foam rolling, especially if it makes the difference between you doing some foam rolling or doing none at all. As a whole, my volunteers found their experience with these socks to be very positive. So big thanks to Louise, uh, Richard F, Janet and Richard B. And now I'm going to dive into my portion of the video, which is the desk research.